bleeping hot today. Cue the intro. Today I'm working on a 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is a Jeep that I bought to sell. So there's a couple things that I have to fix on it. I live in the Midwest and one of the biggest things in the summertime to have is air conditioning. Just by fixing the air conditioning on this Jeep, I can sell it for $500,000 more. So I'm gonna show you how I fix the air conditioning on this Jeep. So the problem is the blower motor resistor. What happened was the blower motor resistor overheated and you can see that the terminals are melted. So what he decided to do was run power from the cigarette lighter directly to the blower motor on a toggle switch. And this is what happened. The wires actually melted across the center console and burnt marks into it. So I've already picked up a center console. I've gotten that replaced. Now it's time to replace the blower motor resistor. So this was a common issue of the Jeep Grand Cherokees. So whenever you're ordering your blower motor resistor from your parts store online, make sure you're getting the right one. Does your Jeep have automatic temperature control or does it have standard temperature control? And here's the difference. The one on the right is an automatic temperature control. It's easy to see. And this is the blower motor resistor for it. The one on the left is your normal temperature control where you control the fan speed. And this is the blower motor resistor for that. So once you get your blower motor resistor out, you'll know which one is correct for you. So I got this replacement blower motor resistor from Dorman Products. And the reason I got this one is the cooling fins are much longer than the original one. You can see that they're a lot stouter so they can dissipate the heat a lot more. Secondly, I actually was able to get the connector wires for both the power and the feed uh, going to the blower motor. So this is the part that melted going into the original one. So I'm going to replace all that at the same time. But first, we've got to get the original blower motor resistor out. And here's how you do it. The blower motor resistor is located on the passenger side of the Jeep underneath the dash. There's only two screws that hold it in, and then there's a connection that you have to disconnect to get it out. So there's also a wire that goes from the blower motor resistor to the fan, to the blower motor, that we need to check out. I want to make sure that the blower motor works before I order the parts for the blower motor resistor, just in case I need to order both. And the easiest way to do that is to just apply power to the blower motor on the power and then ground to make sure the blower motor spins. Okay, we are underneath the passenger's dash and there are three wires. I had to cut these wires to be able to get the old unit out. And these wires here from this side, these are the blower motor wires um, from the old harness that I used to check to see if the power was working on that blower motor. I'm going to replace the connection that I had to cut off of the old one because it was melted and I'm going to replace it with the unit that came with the Dorman products kit. Now this is going to be pretty easy. Uh, it's a red wire, a black wire that are big, and then a smaller uh, brown wire that will go to uh, the smaller wire here in the center, in the center on the connector. So let's get those stripped out and stuck together. So when it comes to wiring harnesses, there's a lot of different options when it comes to connecting them to previously installed wires. So let's go through a couple of those and make sure you're doing it right. The first option for connecting wires together is a scotch lock. A scotch lock basically has a metal shear on the inside that cuts through the insulation on both wires and cuts into the wire to make the electrical connection. These should never be used. The second option is a butt style connector. A butt style connector 
takes two wires that are twisted together, insert them into the butt end style, and crimps together. These work well for stereo installs, but when you're trying to make wires in line, they don't work well. The third option is our old-fashioned butt connector. Butt connectors work fantastic. They do crimp the wire together. However, they're not good in outdoor settings where moisture or water may be. Water can get inside a butt connector and corrode the wire from the inside. Secondly, they are just a compression style fitting, so you're basically clamping down on the wire and using that to hold the wires together. The downside to that is if there's tension on the wire, the wire can actually come apart. The fourth option is solder. Now, soldering a wire together is definitely our best option. We can solder the wire together to not only get a very strong connection, but a very permanent connection that flows electricity well. When using solder, you want to use some sort of heat shrink tube around the solder joint to make sure that the moisture stays out of it, and that way it doesn't short to ground or short to power, whichever way you're going. So that is by far the best option when it comes to connecting wires together. But it is very tedious and time consuming. So I am going to use the best of both worlds. This is a soldered butt connector. So on the inside of this connector, there is solder in the center ring, which is silver, and then the blue is shrink tube. So we'll use that with my little heat torch here, and we will melt the shrink tube together and then solder the wires at the same time. I'm gonna take the wires, I'm gonna leave them straight, slide the butt connector with the solder over, stick the two wires together so the wires are interlocking, get any of the straggler wires that popped out and push those back together. Slide the soldered connector back over the top. We're going to put the solder right in the middle of those two wires. I have a soldering iron that has a heater tip on the end. So we're going to fire that up. Make sure it's glowing red. And try not to burn the carpet. I like to melt the shrink tube down first. The reason I do that is it holds the wire in place when it's time for soldering. So we're going to melt it on as many sides as we can. A little bit of a hard process to get you in there, but let me see if I can show you what this looks like. So the solder is right here in the center. That's that silver part. I'm just going to start heating on it on one side, and that thin solder ring will start melting into that wire. Now, I don't want to leave it in one spot too long. I want to keep it warm, but I want to run that solder around. So it connects those two wires together. If you hold your heat in one spot too long, it'll actually burn the shrink tube and that is a bad day. would not recommend using a big torch on these. It just throws too much heat out and you actually burn through the shrink tube before you melt the solder. That comes from experience. So let's twist it around one more time. Get it from the back side. Okay, from this angle I am starting to melt carpet, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to put something back there if it's carpet that you're going to see to make sure that it stays together. Okay, so we got all the solder melted. We're just going to let that cool down. 
and that is the best connection you can make. A solder connection with a waterproof, moisture-proof shrink tube all in one. Time to reinstall the new blower motor regulator into the hole. Just two screws to hold it on. Stick it up inside. I always like putting the connectors at the back just because it makes a prettier installation. Install the screw. Installed, and then we will just tighten it down. Well, there you have it. Replacement of a blower motor resistor on a 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee with automatic temperature control. I had to replace the fuse also because when he was fiddling with the wires, I'm sure he burnt that to the ground just like he tried to burn the rest of the Jeep to the ground. So, easy fix. You can do it at home yourself. So what did I learn from this project? My garage is hot and I need air conditioning in my garage too.